Last week, President Donald Trump spoke at the Bitcoin conference in Nashville. He promised to build a Bitcoin reserve, adding to the 8,000 tons of gold the federal government already holds. This is a bigger deal than I think even Trump realizes because it signals a shift in America's political discourse towards hard backing the dollar again, whether with gold or Bitcoin. So first, why build a reserve? Sure, it promotes Bitcoin as an industry and gives the government more hard assets for the hard times. But the most important reason is that backing the dollar with hard assets the Fed cannot print can save the U.S. dollar from a potential global collapse of paper money. Now, for the first 144 years of this republic until FDR in 1933, the dollar was backed by gold. So you could walk into a bank with a 20 and walk out with an ounce of gold. Nixon, of course, ended this in 1971, removing the last vestige of dollar convertibility into gold. Since then, we've had the current system. The dollar is backed by thin air and the Fed prints as much as the public will bear in inflation. Now, the U.S. does hold roughly 8,000 tons of gold, but they're not backing the dollar anymore. They're just another asset like student loans or mineral leases. Instead, the dollar is backed by nothing more than expectations, so the public guessing how much Jerome Powell will print this time. The problem, of course, is that without hard backing, they removed the last guardrails against inflation, so government could now print as much as they like, and print they did. When Nixon closed the gold window in 1971, the U.S. had a debt-to-GDP ratio of just 35%. West Germany was at 18%, and Japan was at 10%. Today, the U.S. is at 135%, the Eurozone is at 91%, and Japan is above 260%. In all three countries, the currency has lost at least two-thirds in buying power, while economic growth has slowed to a crawl, and financial crises have come like clockwork. Adam Smith actually warned of this in 1776, calling paper money a, quote, wagon way in the air, meaning it looks like a free lunch, just like a highway in the sky doesn't have to cover farmland, unbacked money doesn't require gold in the vault to back it. But Smith's point is that it invites catastrophe when you inevitably fall off that floating money highway in the sky, which we did in 1929, the 1970s, 2008, and perhaps again today. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. Backing paper with expectations works well enough in normal times. I mean, sure, prices triple, but you don't collapse. The problem is when they keep spending until the public will not accept any more inflation. At that point, the money printer gig is up, and markets wonder if governments actually can repay those debts. That, historically, is when it gets exciting, markets stop accepting worries and start demanding hard backing at which point he who has the gold or the Bitcoin makes the rules. A Bitcoin reserve, like a gold reserve, is insurance for that day. And if Trump builds one, the rest of the world will be forced to follow a game theory cascade that would drive Bitcoin to prices that will send Peter Schiff Schiff posting for months. Read the rest of the article with charts and all the gory details at ProfStAnange.com. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.